It was an early evening in December when a package arrived on my doorstep. The delivery was in the nick of time. I needed this package to help me with my latest case. I was curious about the contents and took it inside immediately for an unboxing. Free write. The first word haunted me. The amalgam of two words made me ponder. Could a single use device make me write free and would it help me to free write a story to add to the pantheon of existing stories found in the cold, dark city known as YouTube? I grabbed the brown cardboard box at each corner and noted its heft. What were these words? I was intrigued and inspired by the words that adorned the strapping tape, but was not distracted by my mission. Open the box, or as others put it, the unboxing. I cut through the series of words and opened the flaps of the box. Inside the box was another, surrounded by packaging. I released the interior box from its captivity and placed it on the table in front of me. Again, the words, free write, were front and center. Flipping the box revealed a secret. Freewrite is a smart typewriter with an e-ink screen and a mechanical keyboard that will seamlessly back up my writing to the cloud. I was intrigued. The images excited me as I flipped the box on all sides to reveal even more technical tidbits about this device. side of the box revealed the sexy profile of this retro-inspired but decidedly high-tech device. The lines made me giddy with anticipation. I wanted to put my fingers all over the keys, to longingly gaze at the e-ink display, to watch the bits fly through the air as they sink to the cloud. It was a thing of beauty, and I knew taking it with me to diners and coffee shops would make me the envy of every writer within view. I cut through and then ripped off the transparent covering using my Swiss made cutting tool. One last time, I reviewed the box and noted the name, Free Write. But then, from out of nowhere, another name, Astro House. I knew that name. Was it from my time in Manhattan investigating the Rittenhouse murder? No, my memory brought me back to a Kickstarter campaign from 2014. Astro House was finally out of the seedy side of the internet and had gone legit selling the free write in over 50 countries and releasing over 115 million words into the cloud. But would their device inspire me to add to that collection of words? Slowly, I lifted the top of the box. The free write was covered in a fibrous cloth that denied my viewing of the device. Even the interior box packaging was gorgeous. The free write was held into place by two black side supports. I slowly pulled them off and move the cover. As I lifted the device, I noticed the weight. It was hefty, but in a good way. Delaying my desire to put fingers on the keys, I noticed a small package containing a corded and fashionable black and white USB-C cable, complete with strap and that word, free write, on each connector. I'll use this to charge the free write, but I will need my own power brick. Astro House included a cute sticker of the device and a user's manual. The user's manual is small, simple, and includes everything I need to operate the smart typewriter. I was ready to get flowing and look once more longingly over the beautiful device. On the upper left of the device was a switch labeled folder. Three cryptic options included A, B, and C. The switch was substantial and made a thunking sound as I cycled through the options. Another similar Wi-Fi switch was on the upper right of the device with three additional options, off, on, and new. Between these switches was a gorgeous e-ink display with good contrast and sharp text. The display was easy on my eyes. Finally, the keyboard, one last time, I refrained from touching the keys. I took a look at the device's backside. There was a crevice, and within the crevice, a handle. I pulled the handle out. It was firm and substantial, just right for a night on the town full of intrigue and writing. I put the handle back in its storage position because it was finally time, time to tickle the keys. I spun the free write into place and began to frantically tap on the mechanical keys. 
They were everything I dreamed. Brown box switches with great travel and a fantastic sound. I reviewed the instruction manual and then pushed the red toggle switch. The switch traveled deep into the all aluminum shell of the free right and then bottomed out. There wasn't a click to acknowledge a power contact. It was an old school feel that felt, well, right. And about the aluminum shell, it is substantial, curved, hefty, and oh, so sexy. This is a device with a mid-century styling that contains minimalist 21st century technology to provide a writing experience that is both retro and modern at the same time. There was no doubt in my mind, this was a premium product and not for the faint of heart. It was for the serious writer who knew that what stood between them and their publisher was their first draft. This was a device for drafting the next great novel. I considered my words as the free write began to boot up and begin the setup process. The e-ink display fading and drawing a progress indicator over and over until the device was ready. The typing experience was everything I dreamed. Typing felt like I was on an electric typewriter back from my youth, but instead of keys striking paper to place ink, the e-ink display displayed the words instantaneously. The faster I typed, the slower the display of characters, but unlike a traditional typewriter, not once did the keys lock together in the carriage. All in all, it felt right, except it was missing something. What was it? Oh yes, the ding of the bell at the end of each line as the carriage return moved from right to left, greeting each key strike. I wanted to take time for extended typing. Did the battery have a charge? I connected the USB-C cable to the free write and to power. The free write displayed a charging indicator, but not an amount of charge. I didn't know what I was doing. It was time for me to learn more about the free write, and I grabbed the user's manual. I read about the folder switch and now understood that the device allows three concurrent writing projects and this switch toggles between them. It was a retro way to move between documents and eased any worry about complicated file management. Intrigued by this left switch, I operated the right switch. I moved the Wi-Fi switch to new and the e-ink screen prompted me to connect to a Wi-Fi network. I chose my home network and entered my credentials. The free write and I now have a special relationship. It knows one of my most valuable secrets, my home Wi-Fi password. Time will tell if this is a long-term trusted relationship. I moved the switch back to the on position knowing that if I ever needed to join another network, I would switch back. The instructions offered many other options, but I, I wasn't interested in those. It was, it was time to type. I found a comfortable location grabbed a libation, and began drafting the next great novel. The words danced out of my brain, through my fingers, and into the free write. The distraction-free environment provided me with focus. Limiting my writing syntax formatting using Markdown kept the thoughts flowing without the need to include complicated keyboard combinations. Even though I can change the font size of the letters, the default was perfect for writing and discouraged me from looking at my previous sentences. And then it happened. Dang. I noticed a mistake in a previous line. Now what, I said to myself. I knew the device wasn't designed for heavy editing. That was never the intent, but I couldn't help it. I wanted to fix my error. I'd used the backspace key with much success to correct errors on the same line, but now, how do I move to a previous line without backspacing entire sentences? There aren't individual cursor keys. Again, reminiscent of an old typewriter. Oh, but there are cursor key functions, the user manual informed. Hold down the red new key and use the popular WASD keyboard layout. To move the cursor one word left or right at a time, hold new plus A or D. To move up or down a paragraph at a time, hold new plus W or S. And then I saw them. Cursor key markings on the front of the WASD keys. These markings on the front of the keys were reminiscent of another device from my past, a Commodore computer. I soon discovered that to move back or forward a character, I had to hold down the shift key along with the previous A or D combination. Using shift along with W or S, move the cursor up and down one line. While not intuitive at first, upon successive use, the cursor functionality became more natural and intuitive. This layout reduced keys on the keyboard while at the same time provides the keys you need. Are there other keyboard combinations, I pondered? The room
began to darken, and I noticed the display glow eerily. The e-ink display had a soft backlit screen that provided enough light to work in the evening, but a small amount of ambient light was still required to see the keys on the keyboard. This was no uppity backlit keyboard, and I didn't need that backlight. I was a professional, and I could type in the dark if I had to. Wait, what was this? In the dark, I noticed a key, a special key, literally a key called special. I tapped it and noticed the small display under the e-ink display changed. The free write cycled through displays that showed date and cloud sync status, reading time, words, and character counts, a retro clock with hands, not digits, a date view, a chronograph to capture the amount of time I've been writing, and a blank display. Are there other options? I looked at the user's manual again to learn that holding the space bar will display the battery charge level and verification that my words have been synced to the cloud. Finally, an options menu is available by pressing the power button for two seconds, but I botched my press. I didn't press long enough and was greeted by the image of a fellow writer, Edgar Allan Poe. I pressed the power button again two times, and this time was greeted by another fellow writer, Isaac Asimov. What other writers would adorn my e-ink display when I put the device in standby with a single short press? I would need to figure that out later. For now, I needed to understand the options available on this device. I finally pressed the button for the correct amount of time, about two seconds, and an options menu appeared. On the device, I could log out of my account, change the font size, modify the screen brightness, install firmware updates, and shut down the device. I would later learn that there are other options using a web browser, such as connecting the device to cloud services such as Dropbox or my preferred cloud, Google Drive. But that's a story for another day. I was content with what I had learned and ready to use the free write to help finish a novel that has been in gestation since 2017. It's a fine tale of intrigue, action, and retro computing, but alas, that too is for another day. If you like this story, hit that like button below. If you'd like to learn more about the FreeWrite Smart Typewriter's online features or its younger and more compact sibling, the FreeWrite Traveler, drop a comment below. You can help fund this channel by hitting the thanks button below or becoming a member at buymeacoffee.com slash retrocombs. Stay tuned at the end of this video for more stories from me and read the video description below to learn how you can get your own free write and save money in the process. Is this the end? For now, but until later, Retro Combs out.